Oh, hello. Mr. Fritz here. Let's talk about sequences. Let's first define a sequence. You all know what a sequence is. Uh, you've talked about them before, but maybe you haven't given it the formal definition. So here's what a sequence is. It's an ordered list of numbers defined by a rule. Uh, numbers in the sequence are called members. So you have the elements, the actual numbers that are in the sequence are called members. A sequence that continues forever is called infinite sequence. And likewise, a sequence that terminates is called a finite sequence. Probably the easiest or more simple sequence that you've seen before is just the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. If I were to continue counting this forever, this would be an infinite sequence. Uh, the members of the sequence would be one, two, three, four. Those are the members of the sequence. And the order in which they appear are uh, as follows as well. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. So let's talk about just creating sequences. So if it's a, a number of a list of numbers that are following the rule, we, we need a rule. So let's write down the first four terms of the sequence. And we've got two different, two different scenarios here. We're going to start with a four, and we're going to add nine each time. So we want the first five, uh, excuse me, first four terms. So we'll, our first member would be four, first term would be four, then we'd add nine, so 13. And then we'd add 9, so 22. And then we'd add 9, so that's 31. That's 1, 2, 3, 4. And you know what I'm going to do? I was, I'm actually going to just kind of list underneath uh, the number associated with the, uh, the term. So like this 1 is the first number in the sequence. This 2 associated with the second term in the sequence. This 3 is associated with the third term. And so this is kind of like where or when they appear. Um, that's what these numbers mean. That will kind of come into play later. So think about just the order in which we list these numbers. All right, another example. Uh, I want to start with 2, but this time I want to multiply by 3 each time. So here's my first number, 2, and then times 3 would be 6, and times 3 would be 18, and then times 3 would be, I think, 40 uh, or 64. Whoops. Let's try that again. 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 6 is 18, and 3 times, oh no, I'm sorry, 54. I think I got that right. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 54. Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, but if it is, then that would be my, my fourth term. And again, I'm just going to kind of list what uh, these numbers are. So the first term, the second term, third term, and the fourth term. And uh, just to kind of make that association with this sequence. Both of these are sequences. They follow a specific rule. All right, so why don't you try this? Pause the video and uh, and go ahead and write out these terms, and um, we'll see how it goes. Oh, I actually didn't make an answer slide. So uh, let's just list these out real quick. So 45 and subtracting 6. So this would be 39 and 33 and then 27. Those would be the first four terms. 96 and then divide by 2. So this would be 96. Then we'd have divide by 2 would be uh, 48 and then 24, and then 12. And you know what, for consistency's sake, I'm just gonna list when these numbers appear in the list, in the sequence. One, two, three, four. All right, so let's just describe sequences. There's lots of different ways we can describe them. What we've done is we've had a rule and then we've written out the numbers. So um, here's a sequence that is built up by some sort of scenario. We've got bricks, we're imagining this pyramid of bricks. We're in the first row, we have uh, three bricks, then four bricks, and five bricks, and this pattern will continue. So we can kind of list the terms of, of this um, situation that's going on here. And if I were to say, let's call, let's call this the number of bricks for a consistency sake, let's define that as some u sub n. And we'll get into this notation, what that means in a minute, um, but we're going to call it u sub n, where n is the row number. So then the first row we could call u sub 1, the number of bricks at row 1. The second row we could call u sub 2, the number of bricks at row 2. Uh, the number of bricks at row 3 would be row, or u sub 3, and so on and so forth. So we can list these terms. So if we are listing the number of bricks, uh, we could say the first row is 3 bricks, then 4 bricks would be the second row, then 5 bricks, and then 6 bricks. And since this continues forever, we would uh, have to write this ellipsis dot dot dot. And that's what that arrow means. It kind of goes on forever here. So it would be just listing the terms of the sequence. We could uh, use words and we could say that the top row has three bricks. 
and each subsequent row has one more brick than the last. Oop, not than, just than. Then the last. So this would be describing the pattern. It, what it highlights is those two important things. Our, our starting number, we start with three bricks, and then it talks about how each next row has one more brick. So that would be describing the pattern, where we start and how we progress from there. And then finally, we can use an explicit formula. So uh, this is the super mathy thing, where you know I, I'm not really good at writing all these words. This might even be a spelling mistake. Who knows? But I can write a math uh, explicit formula. Uh, so let's do that. If u sub n represents the number of bricks at each row, you might have already found a pattern here. The, if I wanted to relate the number of bricks somehow to the, the number of the row that I'm in, well, you might have noticed that if in the first row I've got three bricks, the second row I've got four bricks, the third row I've got five bricks, the number of bricks is always looking like it's going to be two more than the actual row number that I'm in. So I could say that the u sub n is going to equal the row number plus 2, or I can make it even better symbolically, and I could say u sub n is going to equal the row number n plus 2. This would be my, my formula uh, using all mathematical notation that would express the number of bricks at each row. So easily I could find the number of bricks at the 20th row by saying that it's going to be 20 plus 2. There will be 22 bricks in the 20th row. Finally, I can uh, express this pictorially. What I can do is I can graph uh, the, the row by the number of bricks in that row. So the first row, this has three, so I could say I could plot one, three, I could plot two, four, I could plot three, five, I could plot four, six, five, seven. And uh, those of you who are feeling the urge to connect these things and make a line, don't, because a line would, rep would mean that I've got all of, uh, you know, don't write this, but if, if you wanted to make a line, that would mean that all of these points in between, these defined uh, points that I plotted before, they are also on this sequence or in this uh, solution set of these terms, but they're not, right? I, I'm not going to have a row of three and a half bricks, uh, or I'm not going to have a row 2.5, right? All of these are distinct natural counting numbers. So we would call this actually a discrete uh, um, function, where I don't have a continuous function, this is discrete, where I have these defined points and I don't have the, all this infinite stuff going in between these things. But this would be my pictorial representation of this sequence. So why don't we take a break here and uh, we're going to stop the video, we'll pick it up looking at some examples.